Good evening, everyone. Susan Campfield here with SueStampfield.com. Welcome to my craft room. Come on in. Happy Saturday. So good to be hanging out with you here um, in craft land. <laughs> We're going to create um, some fun things. We're going to relax together. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to give you some creative inspiration for the upcoming um, holidays and uh, things that you can make to give out to people that you are grateful for or uh, you have a lot. Yeah, people that you're grateful for and um, people that you want to wish happy holidays so, to welcome everyone. So good to see so many familiar names. If you're new um, to my channel, hello. Thanks for being here. Uh, you might be on uh, YouTube on my Susan Campfield YouTube channel, or you might be over on Facebook, either on my Susan Campfield page, or you might be on my Sue Stampfield Facebook group. Anyone is welcome to join us in the Sue Stampfield Facebook group. We talk crafting and everything else. And lately we've been talking about gratitude and things that we're grateful for. And it's been just so heartwarming to read um, people's comments on things that they're grateful for. So um, I, I feel so blessed to know all of you people. I mean, I don't know you know you, but some of you have had the, the privilege to talk on the phone with or exchange emails or texts with and uh, or we chat over on Facebook. And so um, I am honored that you um, hang out with me. <laughs> and I'm so lucky to know you. So welcome, everyone. So glad that you're here. Um, we're going to do some creative playing tonight. I'm excited. We're actually going to do a treat holder. Um, treat holder. It sounded like tree holder when I said that. Um, I used to do a lot of treat holders. Um, uh, somebody even asked me, why don't you do as many treat holders anymore? We've been kind of on a card making kick, haven't we? But uh, this time of year, especially, I think treat holders are super useful and handy. Um, so uh, if you'd like to um, subscribe, I had I have um, project sheet emails that go out. Um, I one went out today. If you uh, subscribe to my project sheet emails, check your inbox. Um, a couple of the projects that we've done recently on videos went out. Um, where is it? There it is. <laughs> went out by email earlier today. So um, if you're not getting them or you can't find them in your inbox, um, you can do a couple of things. Um, your email might be receiving them, opening them, and deciding that you don't want them, which I know is super frustrating. It is for me too. <laughs> uh, but if you put my email address in your contacts as a, a approved contact, and that's Susan at SueStampfield.com, that will help. Where is it? There it is. <laughs> Put Susan at SueStampfield.com in, 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 in your contact list. You can also email me too if you want uh, when you have that. Um, the other thing you can do is it actually might be in your inbox and they're just hiding it. So you can search for um, Susan at SueStampfield.com in your email and you'll be surprised what you might find that they're hiding from you. So check those options first if you're not receiving them. Okay, so let's go ahead and you love uh, treat boxes too, Paula. Excellent. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, go down to the bottom camera here. I'm just looking. Oh, yes, I should introduce my uh, wonderful moderator, Jennifer Walsh. Hey, Jennifer. Jennifer is part of my Stampfield Stars team and is helping me out uh, by helping moderate on the YouTube channel, which means she's here to uh, help. Uh, spot out questions that I miss. So feel free to tag her if you have a question that I, I missed. Just put ampersand or the at symbol, sorry, not ampersand, at symbol, and then type in Jennifer and her name should pop up there. So let's go ahead and um, switch back down to the camera here. Woohoo! Um, you did get your, your email today. Yay! So happy. So happy. Um, I'm going to switch to this camera. <gasps> there we go. It's messy desk time. So in case you haven't joined me before, actually, you know what? <laughs> switch back. Um, grab a beverage of choice. Um, tonight I have tea. I have cinnamon tea in my cup. Mm. That's good. Woo, that's cinnamony. Um, I lose things. And so my viewers decided to start playing a game. Uh, when I lose things and then I find them on my desk because, you know, we're crafters and we we lose stuff. We pile other stuff on top of it and then we can't find it. When I find it, I say I found it and everybody takes a drink. Now, I'm feeling super organized tonight. So 
I don't think I'm going to say it very often. So I hope you're not too thirsty here. <laughs> Let's go ahead and flip back down to the camera. All right, so we're going to make a super cute treat box tonight. Um, I received a treat box from one of my Stampfield Stars team members, Terry Snyder, um, that was just adorable. It's, so it's a little treat holder, and inside is a Kit Kat. It's a perfect size for the Kit Kat bars. Now you can pick up these Kit Kat bars in your grocery store. I picked up a pack tonight in my grocery store in the candy aisle. That's a dangerous place, by the way, the candy aisle. Um, but you get eight in a pack and um, they're the snack size of Kit Kat and they fit perfectly in this treat box. So uh, the one that Terry made for me is using a um, the host paper. Uh, this is a paper that you can earn for free if you place a $150 order. It's in the mini catalog. Um, and it's super cute. Uh, we're going to do a couple different versions tonight. And we're going to use some gnomes. <laughs> Those of you that are on my Sue Stampfield um, Facebook group, I posted a question this morning to guess. Uh, it was a survey, actually, a poll, uh, which one you thought I would be using. And it was, um, it, gnomes actually was, I think, the top choice, but it was closely followed by fitting florets. So we're going to do um, do one with um, some gnome fun tonight. Gnome fun? Yes. So I want to start with giving you the dimensions for this one. And I'm going to show you another one I made. Oh, this one doesn't have candy in it. Let's just fix that right now. I have a tree holder with no candy. Sorry about all the crackling. It's not, whoops, wrong one. <laughs> so this one um, I made on Thursday night with our team video. Um, this is with the Fitting Florets Designer Series paper, which is now available to purchase. And you might be saying, well, wait, Susan, that paper is has white berries on it. This is the pocket card we did with it. I colored the berries with the Stampin' Blends. So I used the light real red um, to just uh, give it a little pop of red there. So, so that would be one that would be fun for Christmas. But we're going to do one with the gnomes today. And we're going to do... Um, let's... let's um, I'm, I'm hemming and hawing here because I feel like I should show you how to make the shorter one, but I'm going to do that after. We're going to make a little bit longer one. We're going to take this size, but don't worry, I'll share the size with you as well. But we're going to make this taller back here because we're going to use the, the um, gnome dies and we're going to build a gnome here. And we're actually, my thought for this one was actually Thanksgiving and doing a, a little gratitude um, gift that you could either have at, if you're hosting a Thanksgiving dinner or going to one, you could bring these for everybody that's at the, um, that's going to be there, or you could give these out to people that you are grateful for as just a little um, thank you. November is, na is National Gratitude Month. So it's the perfect time to do that. I'm gonna bring in the die cutting machine here once again. <laughs> I don't have enough room on my desk. Does anyone else have that problem? All right, let's get everything fitted in here. So um, I'm going to remove that banner so that it's not blocking us. Okay, how's that look, everybody? All right, so we're going to raise this up just a touch. And we've got some gnome parts here. And I pre-cut. Oh, God darn it. I did it already, you guys. I covered everything up. I pre ah, found it. <laughs> All right, take it. I'm taking a sip of tea. Got my water here too. My tea is behind a lot of cords that I'm using for this video. Hmm. That's still really cinnamony. I really should take the tea bag out of it. Uh, let's go back to comments. Okay, there we go. You feel like the colored berries might be winter green. Ooh. Wintergreen, that, that cut like makes me hungry. All right, so I found my bits of paper here. And let's go ahead and cut a beard. And we're going to cut a nose. I'm using Petal Pink for the nose. Lots of other colors you could use for your nose. Um, I'm going to do Petal Pink. And then for my shoes, I'm trying to decide between... Cajun Craze and Early Espresso. 
I'm going to cut them in early in Cajun Craze because I actually have a pair already cut here in Early Espresso, and um, I'll have you all vote on which ones we should use. Now I have just laid out all my parts on the wrong plate, <laughs> so I want to use the scarred up plate um, to cut into these, and I want to keep this top plate pristine. Now I know some of you have recently purchased a die cutting or the Stampin' Up die cutting machine. So it's uh, important when you go with die cut your pieces to flip your plates every time that you cut because that will extend the life of your uh, of your cutting plates. So I always keep this one on top um, and not cut into until the bottom one is so scarred up that it's uh, transferring through the paper or not cutting anymore or it gets really curved. And then I discard the, the bottom one and I put the one that's been on top on the bottom and I get a fresh one for the top. Hopefully that makes sense. These are a consumable item, so eventually they do need to be replaced. But you can extend the, the life of them by flipping the plates every time. So I've turned this one over. I like to turn it over when I'm done cutting um, because then... Uh, you know, it doesn't matter. You can do it every time you start. You can do it every time you're done. Just want to stick to one so that um, you remember which one you, uh, you know, if I turn it this time and next time I go to use it, I turn it again, then I'm <laughs> on the same side. So now I know it's all ready for my next die cut. It's all set to go. So we're going to um, use a different paper here for our gnome because this is um, going to be a, a fallish theme or gratitude theme, or I'm look, thinking Thanksgiving colors. So um, we that's why we're doing the Cajun craze and the early espresso. And I want some designer series paper for his hat. So what I have here are the packs of, um, this is the six by six designer series paper that Stampin' Up! sells. It's just called um, whatever the color family is. Jennifer, would you be able to um, find the page number for these um, six by six pattern papers? I got every color. So this one is bright. This one is regals. This one is subtles. And this one is neutrals. That way, I've got designer paper that goes with all of my Stampin' Up! colors. They also are available in the in colors, which I don't have out. Um, not sure that I have... I know I have the newest in colors. I don't know if I have the, the last ones or not. So the colors that I want, the Cajun Craze is here in the Regals. And these patterns, so they come in all the colors. And you get two patterns. So let me pull these out and you get two sheets of each pattern. So they come uh, polka dots on one side with a plaid on the other. And then the other one is stripes on one side with floral on the other. So let's pull those out. We're going to go ahead and set this uh, back aside. And we're going to make, we're going to go with a Cajun craze hat. I'm making an executive decision here. <laughs> That's what we're going to do. Hang on. I have a piece already cut. So all I need you to tell me is, if we are going to use the plaid side or if we want to use the polka dot side. So if you can let me know in the comments um, which side you think we should use. I'm going to go ahead and grab my little boots here. And there we go. All right. So this is what the polka dot side would look like. And this is the plaid side. So far, it's a dead tie. <laughs> uh, Jennifer has the number for us. I'm going to pop that up on the screen. It's on page 135 of the annual catalog. And hello, hello. Ah, uh, it looks like the plaid has, has uh, squeaked out uh, for the win. So we're going to go with the plaid. But don't worry, I've got the polka dots cut too if we decide we don't like it. <laughs> Because you know what? We can change our mind. It's totally allowed in crafting to go, eh, that's not, that doesn't look like what I thought it would look like, right? And I don't know what this is going to look like because I, I haven't, uh, we're doing this together. I haven't made this one. So 
let's see what the plaid one looks like. I did, I did cut some hats though earlier. So I've got, I do have it in the polka dot. So there's a cute little plaid hat. And let's set this aside. All right, so I'm gonna bring in, um, we're just gonna go with, I have both Cajun Craze here and Early Espresso, but I think we're gonna go, let's see what it looks like in the Cajun. And I have this piece, this piece is cut at, I'm hesitant to even tell you because <laughs> we might decide it's the wrong size. So um, I'm making this up as I go along because we need it a little bit taller than Terry's so that our gnome will fit. Right here, all that will fit is his beard. <laughs> so we need room for his boots and his hat and all the things. So this piece is eight and three quarters by two and three quarters. And I'm gonna score it at, again, that's two and three quarters by eight and three quarters. I'm going to score it at one and three eighths and one and seven eighths, three and a quarter and three and three quarters. Okay. I have a little note here where that is written, but I have to make a little change. Bear with me because it's, this is the short one. Let me just change that. So eight and three quarters. All right. So these are the dimensions. So two and three quarters by eight and three quarters scored at one and three eighths, one and seven eighths, three and a quarter, and three and three quarters. And then we have some designer series paper that we're going to cut next. So let's do that. Let's set this aside. And these designer paper sizes are wrong because they're for the short one. So we're gonna have to figure out what they're gonna need to be for the tall one. So you're just gonna fold on the score lines and this is going to be adhered to the backing piece, just like that. And there you can see that little sleeve that we're making for the Kit Kat. And then we have this tall piece for our gnome. So let's measure our gnome and see how he's going to fit on here. And then we'll figure out how, what size of designer paper we are going to cut. So boots and hats. Yep, that looks about right. Okay, yay. So I'm going to grab my ruler. And this piece is... Yep, so I'm going to cut my paper at three and a half. Okay. Let me just change this. Um, that was this one. Braceable pens, they're wonderful. My favorite thing ever, Frixion, love them. All right, so let's go ahead and cut that designer series paper. And I think we're gonna try the stripes and we'll see if we like that. Just lay it on here with the boots and the beard and the hat. Yep, we'll go with stripes. All right. So just going to grab my paper trimmer. And the width here is going to be two and five eighths because this width is two and three quarters. So I want it just an eighth of an inch skinnier. So two and five eighths. So that's one more than one eighth more than a two and a half. If you're not a math person like me. All right. And then our length. What did I say our length was? Three and a half? I think it was three and a half. Let's find out. And then this piece is going to be one and a quarter. So one and a quarter, yes, okay. All right, let's put the trimmer aside and let's put our, let's build our little tree holder here. I'm gonna put some strong adhesive down here. I'm using Seal Plus. So if you, ha you don't wanna put it on the long piece, these are the scores to hold the, the um, 
make the sleeve, you want to put it on this shorter end. So I'm just going to line up that shorter end with that score to form that little sleeve. And then you can take a bone folder and just put it inside and just kind of give that a rub to adhere that adhesive. The DSP Ellen is three and a half by, I'm checking it, <laughs> uh, two and five eighths. So three and a half by two and five eighths. Good question. Um, here is the Oops, that's Ellen. Sorry, Ellen. Wrong quote. There we go. Um, there's the cardstock base that Jennifer has for us. And then Jennifer, the um, designer series paper is two and five eighths inches wide by three and a half inches long. And the other piece is two and five eighths inches wide by one and a quarter tall. So let's go ahead and stick that on. Sticking to me. Sticky stuff. Hello, Marie. Welcome, welcome. All right. Get some adhesive on the back here. And I'm going to go ahead and hide the comment there with the dimensions. And we're going to stick this down. So I'm looking for about a sixteenth of an inch border all the way around. If you if you don't like to cut in eighths, you can make a bigger border. Totally doesn't matter, right? So let's grab our little gnome. Thought I lost my gnome nose, but I found it. Oh, take a drink. Found it. Mm, more tea. All right. So we have different hats here and different feet. So let me know in the comments if you prefer the brown boots or the Cajun craze boots. That's what the Cajun craze looks like. The browns maybe pop and show up a little bit more, but the other ones are going to match his hat. So, and we wanted to do the plaid hat. So while I adhere the plaid hat, you can decide what you think about the, the boots. So to adhere the hat, you could use uh, liquid glue. My favorite way to do it is to use um, the glue dots. And I'm just going to take my take your pick tool here and roll this glue dot. I'm actually kind of wadding it up into a little blob. And right here on the beard, there's a section that is actually made for the adhesive to go into. It shows you where that hat is going to hit. So it makes it super easy to put these together. Oh, <laughs> I missed a glue dot. There it is. It was sticking to my thumb. I'm like, oh, whoops. All right. I'm going to put that on the other side. So there we've got our two glue dots. And now we're going to stick the hat on over the glue dots. Now you can put the nose on first if you prefer. Um, I usually put it on after the fact. It really doesn't matter. I guess I've done it both ways. Um, I think a small dimensional would be... Um, just fine for the nose. I think the big one just just fits. But we'll use a little one here. So I've got the little dimensional right there. And I'm looking at the votes. I'm seeing more votes for the early espresso boots, also known as brown. <laughs> Few votes for the cage, for the Cajun. Oops, that's a little bit high. There we go. So there's his little nose. And we're going to go with the brown boots because it's going to show a little bit more. So I like that. Good idea, guys. And we're just going to stick these down. Again, we can just use glue dots. You can use adhesive, liquid glue, whichever you prefer. And my goodness, that is one sticky glue dot. And let's get this one on here. And all right, we're gonna just pop those little little feet right on the back of our, our Kit Kat holder here. And then I'm gonna pop the rest of him up on dimensionals. I like that extra little 
uh, lift that I get from dimensionals. I think it just um, gives it a nice, well, dimension. It gives it dimension. Big shock, right? So I've got three on there. This one in the middle is kind of doing double duty because it's um, it's kind of reinforcing the connection with the hat and the beard, just in case my glue dots decide they want to fall off or something. I don't think they would, but so there we have our cute little gnome. How adorable is that? I, I, I Good choice on the boots, guys. I agree with you. I think that was um, a good way to go. Let's go ahead and put a greeting on this. Now, we could use the, the greetings in the set, but they are a little more Christmassy. Um, you could do the, your kindness does not go unnoticed. Um, it's a little bit long, but I think it would fit. In fact, let me grab the die here from... I don't know, it might be a little too long for this. No, it would perfectly fit if you have the stylish shaped spanners. That would perfectly fit in there. Um, another option would be the one I was thinking of, which is this one that says, you are such a blessing. Um, so I'm going to use that one. It's in the Hello Harvest stamp set from the Jan uh, July through December mini catalog. This uh, set of dies also has um, some pumpkins that work perfectly for Thanksgiving. So instead of doing a gnome, you could do a die cut pumpkin on there. That would be really cute. You can see that you are such a blessing is my favorite. It's the one I've, <laughs> the one I've used. So, well, I think I've used the banner too, but it's the one I've used the most so far. So let me grab the a block here out of my drawer and we're going to go ahead and stamp that. We're going to stamp it in Cajun Craze. Uh, mm, actually, we're going to use Early Espresso. So let me grab my Early Espresso since we've got the boots and we're going to just introduce a little bit more brown here. And I'm going to actually use a punch for the. No, maybe I'm not. I'm not going to use a punch because it won't fit. Okay. We're going to use early espresso here. And I want to make sure that this will fit here. Yes. Will it fit on there? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I'm stamping it upside down. I want to pretend I meant to do that. That was actually an accident, but it doesn't matter because I can turn it around. I'm die cutting it. It's the beauty of die cutting. It can be crooked. It can be upside down. Doesn't matter. You're going to die cut it out. So um, let's go ahead and bring in our die cutting machine again. And we're going to use this banner from the Stylish Shapes and we'll die cut this out. All right. Let's grab that. And then I've got a couple more to show you of this um, style of treat holder. And we will do a little recap on the measurements because I'm going to show you the shorter one that Terry did and give you those dimensions as well. All right, so I'm going to, the stamp was, the inky stamp was right under my handle. Were you guys seeing that? Like, were you envisioning me getting handle of our ink all over my hand? Because I sure was. <laughs> All right, we've got our, you are such a blessing. All right. Ooh, it slid. All right, it's okay. Though. So we're going to go back to this, and we're going to pop that up, of course, with some more dimensionals. And can you see this at each person's place around the table? Um, or... Uh, any time here in November, you give this out to um, your hairstylist, your doctor, uh, anyone that is a blessing uh, to you in your life that you appreciate, but maybe don't have a chance to say it very often. Um, we're going to grab our Kit Kat bar here and slide that right in there. And there you would have a little treat holder. Now, if you can use your imagination a little bit here with these pattern papers that come in all of the Stampin' Up! colors, you could make gnomes year round, right? You could make, um, this could be pink and it could be a Valentine's Day theme. So just change out the paper with, um, let's grab our brights here with Melon Mambo. 
you could do it for Easter and use the, uh, the subtles, which are right here. You could do, um, you know, make it an Easter theme. So the possibilities are limitless, right? You could also, of course, do it for Christmas, do a Christmas gnome there would be super cute. So that is our cute little treat holder. And again, this is the one that Terry gave me. You can see I just made it taller to fit what I wanted to put on the back portion. This is the one in the fitted florets, but I did do a couple more. So let's look at a couple more. Let's say you wanna make these for a lot of people and you're not sure you wanna cut that many, um, <laughs> I cut that many gnomes or maybe you want to mix it up. So this one, I just took the storybook gnomes paper that has the little gnomes on it. And I use that to decorate my treat holder. Obviously, this is the smaller one. And then I did this one and I turned it on its side. So this is the gnome from the, the uh, paper right here and they match the dies you can do the girl gnomes you can do the boy gnomes uh whatever oh got that in my arm <laughs> so i turned the treat holder on its side so that i could put um this gnome on there because he's a little too tall if i did it this way right so um so that one i just kept really simple um but either way, it's really cute. So let me show you quickly how to make this one, okay? And I have a piece of Poppy Parade paper here, and that is two and three quarters by seven inches, and it's scored in the same spots as the first one. So the first one was eight and three quarters. The shorter one is seven inches. And it is scored at one and three eighths, one and seven eighths, three and a quarter, and three and three quarters. Exactly the same spots that the taller one was scored at. Okay. And you know what, we're gonna decorate this one. I happen to have some Santa Express designer series paper here. Um, let me know in the comments if we should use the little happy reindeer in the cart with the fa la 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 to decorate the bottom part, or if we should use this one that has the candy cane. So let me know candy cane or deer. And I'm gonna go ahead and fold on these score lines here while you vote. You like the idea of turning it on the side? Yep. Because it doesn't matter. It's not going to, doesn't fall out. <laughs> Be just as cute, right? So many choices. So again, I'm going to assemble it the same way. I'm not going to put any adhesive on the long side or the long end. I'm going to put it on the short end. Someone voted for candy cane and deer. Um, looks like we have a few more votes for the deer. So that's what we'll do. All right. So again, I'm just going to wrap it around until it forms that kind of sleeve shape. And we're going to rub it right here. And again, a shout out to uh, Terry Snyder for sharing that idea with me. Um, Terry's one of my team members and she does some. Um, She's not, doesn't, uh, doesn't do online things. She does, uh, just has uh, people come over and, and make fun stuff at her house and has, does some classes at home at her house. So, um, so there we've got our Kit Kat in there and the winner here was the deer. So we're going to go ahead and put him on the top and the follow la down there. So these could be really quick and easy by just putting designer paper on them, or you could step it up by doing more stamping and die cutting your choice like this ho 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 side too adhesive on there and the designer paper for this one is the top portion is two and three eighths by one and three quarter that's what the upper portion is and the bottom one is two and to, uh, excuse me, two and five eighths by um, 
I'm looking at my thing. Two and five eighths by one and three quarter and two and five eighths by one and a quarter. And there you've got your little deer and you can put Merry Christmas right here. Let me see if I got that right. The shorter treat box um, is two and three quarters by seven. Score at one and three eighths, one and seven eighths, three and a quarter, and three and three quarters. Thank you so much, Jennifer. You can take a screenshot of that one. And then let me give you those designer series paper sizes again because I confused myself. Two and five eighths. They're both two and five eighths. This one is one and three quarter tall, and this one is one and a quarter tall. And that is the same on this one as well. And on the one Terry did. This one, of course, uh, was just die cut and punched uh, die cut pieces and uh, the same cardstock measurements as these other ones. And that one is the same. So there we go. Look at all the fun candy we can give. And I have to hide these from the dogs so they don't get into them, right? So those are our treat holders tonight. How did my camera get all wonky? Oh my goodness. All right. What was the designer series paper for the tall one? Kathy, that was the um, six by six designer series paper that comes in all of the Stampin' Up! colors. We use the um, Cajun Craze, which comes in the Regals pack, along with all the other Regal colors. And one side is polka dots, the other side is plaid, and then one side is stripes, and the other side is the flowers. You can see the rainbow of colors and all the possibilities that you can do with these for birthdays and holidays and uh, 4th of July. You can make this no, a little Uncle Sam gnome and so many different possibilities, right? Okay, put that away. So that's the regals. These are the subtles. These are the brights. And these are the neutrals. And it also comes in both sets of in colors that we currently have. So I'm going to hide the comment here for the short size measurements. And you wish you had them when your kids were in show choir. Yeah, it would have been a great idea. There's the right camera. Thank you so much for joining me tonight, everyone. Um, so many possibilities. Um, <laughs> The dogs are saying, please make a treat holder with milk bones for next time. My dogs are snobs and <laughs> they're picky eaters. So they, um, I felt really bad because this gentleman at the park offered them milk bones and they just turned their little <laughs> whippet noses up at them. So, but some treats they do like and people food they think they really like. So thank you so much for tuning in everyone. Have a great rest of your Saturday. Jennifer, thank you for moderating again tonight. I only said found it two times. All right. Well, we're going to say cheers to all of you so that we can all have another sip of whatever your beverage of choice is. Hmm. What size designer series paper for the larger one? So um, the designer series paper on the larger one, which is right here, here. <laughs> <laughs> is um, the width is the same as on the short one. So the width of the paper is two and five eighths. The top piece is three and a half and the bottom piece is one and a quarter. So the bottom piece is the same size on the, um, on both the short and tall, the bottom piece is the same size. It's just that the top piece varies you know, because this one's, oops, this one's taller. <laughs> so I hope that makes sense. Take care, everyone. Have a great rest of your night and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.